travel and things in association with sun destinations, iconic destinations with amazing experiences present in conversation with. I'm your host, David Batsafin, and today my guest is the co-author of Hiking Beyond Cape Town, 40 Inspiring Hikes Outside the City. She is Nina Duplessis. Um, Nina, good morning. Welcome to you. Good morning, David. Thank you for having me. I, I see down your way is as cold as it is up here in Johannesburg today. Yeah, no, it's been freezing down here. We had snow on the mountains over the weekend, so ah. you can still feel it. Okay. Now, um, Hiking Beyond Cape Town, it's published by Strake. Their um, travel and heritage, um, it's a travel and heritage publication. Tell me about it. Um, the book came about probably about two years ago. Um, I had the idea of getting a book together with all the information that you need on all the hikes um, in and around Cape Town that are worth doing um, because I found it difficult to get information on the in internet um, that's consistent. One website will say it's a difficult hike, the next one will say it's an easy hike. Um, so I thought it would be really cool if you could have a, a little guide um, mm -hmm. that gives you all the information that you need on the, the local hikes. Um, and I approached Vili, who's had a long-standing relationship with um, Penguin Random House and Slag Nature, um, and they agreed. And fast forward two years, we've got the book. <laughs> what do you mean you approached Vili? Vili's your dad. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, Vili's my dad. but. But he's been writing for like 50 years, so I wasn't sure if he was um, up to the challenge of writing yet another book. But yeah, it's been it's been a really nice process. Um, I enjoyed working with him. His knowledge on maps and fauna and flora and just hiking in general is amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I did have to approach him. <laughs> Now, the book, as I say, is Hiking Beyond Cape Town. Unfortunately, you can't hold up your copy because you don't have one yet. Um, be, it'd be no. interesting if it was a knock on your door as we speak and a hand just came in and handed it to you. Actually, um, Vili is meeting with Penguin Random House today and he's going to collect my, my copy. So I'll probably have that by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us firstly why... Why 40 hikes? Why not 37? Why not 42? Um, I don't really know how we got to 40. Um, when we started the process and I did my research, um, I went through all the hikes that I thought were, were worth hiking if it comes to, to scenery. And obviously we wanted to include hikes that are, are for everybody, not only the difficult ones, but also the easy um, and the pet friendly and the child friendly hikes and we got to I think 41 and we decided to just round it off 40. <laughs> Fair enough so the one that you didn't use you can save for the next book which will just yes. be Hiking Beyond Cape Town one inspiring hike outside the city. <laughs> <laughs> There's and actually that, so many hikes um, around here. I think we could probably do another 40 if we wanted to. I, I should imagine so. Do you have, um, the book is beautiful. It's got, it's got maps, it's got picture of um, flora, all sorts of interesting um, information. And it's easily carried, you, you can stick it in a backpack and take it with you so that if you are on a particular hike, you can always refer back to it. Do you have a specific hike that is in this book that is your favorite? It's very difficult to compare hikes because obviously each one's got its own magic. Um, but if I had to choose one, I would definitely say the Panorama Trail in Yonkershoek Nature Reserve just outside Stellenbosch because those Yonkershoek Mountains are awe-inspiring. They are so huge and the views from up there are vast and really, really beautiful. It's a difficult hike. Um, it's a lengthy hike. If I remember correctly, it's about 14 or 15 kilometers. 
Um, and it's a circular hike, so you can do it either way around, but it's difficult either way. Um, but it takes you up Kerk Trekker's neck and then down again by Bergevier neck. But the views, especially the one from Bergevier neck, mm. are just something else. So panorama definitely because of the views and because it's so close to Stellenbosch, but it takes you into the mountains so quickly. Okay. Yeah. Do you find that more or fewer people are currently hiking? When you go out, I, I'm, I'm assuming you, you hike on, on the weekends. I know you have a family. Um, do you hike as a family or do you hike individually? Um, I've got my husband and then two boys. My eldest son is not a hiker. He's not an outdoorsy person. He doesn't like camping. Um, the youngest one used to hike with us. He's done the auto with us. He's done Tugela Falls with us. Um, but he's currently in boarding school, so we yeah. only see him on, on school holidays, so he doesn't hike. But me and my hubby hike mostly every weekend. Um, and I think since COVID, um, when we were all cooked up in our houses for weeks on end, yeah. um, people realized that it's important to, to get out there. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think a lot more people are hiking um, you see families with younger kids, um, older people, definitely a lot more people on the trails since after COVID. Yeah, I remember the early days of COVID, that, that hard lockdown that we all thought, oh, we're over in 21 days, we can all learn a new language, we can all write the book that <laughs> we always wanted to do, and none of us did any of that. But I know that 11 times around our garden was one kilometer. Um, and it... Those are the worst because I eventually had to put stones on a table so that as I walked past the table, I could move the stones. So I remembered how many laps I'd done. And when we, <laughs> we were allowed to step outside, when our gate opened for the first time, after however many weeks it was, I stood on the inside going, what happens if I step outside and the zombies get you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, that was a weird, a weird time. It, it, uh, it was for so many reasons. Nina, when people think of hiking um, or, or sport in general, they often think that it's very expensive. So they try and think of how cheap can we make it? And then things tend to come apart. So if you were to say to somebody, if you want to hike properly, this is what you need to spend money on what would they be in sort of order one to five, if you know what I mean? Um, firstly, I would definitely say invest in good shoes. It doesn't have to be boots. These days, there are really good um, trail running shoes on the market that are light, they dry easy. Um, so definitely number one would be shoes because that can break, make, them, or make or break you. Yeah. Um, secondly, I would say get a decent backpack because it just makes it more comfortable if you've got it back with a chest strap and a hip strap. Um, and that's convenient to get your water or whatever from it. And those two are definitely the most important. The other things, I mean, you can get by with just a normal water bottle, um, maybe a pair of good pants, depending on whether you're male or female, um, because that also makes it different if, difference if you are comfortable in what you are wearing yeah um so yeah a decent pair of pants yeah and apart from that like you said it's it's a relatively cheap um sport mm. when it comes to multi-day hiking obviously there's other things that yeah. you feel like in. but for day hikes i mean if you've got a decent pair of shoes and a decent backpack and comfortable clothes then you're good to go would you suggest, because often people wake up in the morning, they go, oh, let's do a hike. Maybe they look at your book and they go, oh, here's a nice one. It's only like 10 kilometers. We'll just grab, you know, a backpack and off we'll go. And then halfway through the hike, the heavens open. They're caught out in the middle of a rainstorm. They've got no food um, no, and maybe very little water. 
do you suggest then that people, no matter the length of the hike, make sure that they have some sort of snacks, some uh, extra water, and if nothing else, a jacket to keep them warm and dry? Yes, definitely. Um, always pack enough water, even if the book says there is water on the trail. I mean, the streams dry up during high summer. Um, so definitely always carry enough water. You can rather carry too much than not enough because uh, running out of water on the trail is not fun. Um, snacks, yes, definitely. It doesn't have to be expensive stuff. You can pack a sandwich and an energy bar and a little packet of sweeties just to give you some energy. And then definitely um, carry a rain jacket. It yeah. also doesn't have to be a, a 3,000 rain jacket. Just carry something that can keep the water off you. Even and a garbage bag else, works, you know. Yes, you get those those emergency ponchos. Yeah. I think they cost 50 bucks. I always carry one in my bag. Yeah. Um, and then also something that I would suggest also does doesn't matter whether it's a two kilometer or a ten kilometer. It's carry a small first aid kit uh, um, because that can come in handy. Yeah. Yeah, like you say, if you've got the wrong shoes and you pick up a blister, it's not. It gets worse as the trail gets longer. And if it's a, if it's an, you know, point to point rather than circular or out and back, yeah. it's going to be a really awkward day for you. And there's going to be lots of tears and lots of shouting. <laughs> Yeah, and you might decide you never want to go hiking again because you had one bad day. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it is, it is torture walking with blisters. It's really it, not fun. When when you and your husband set out, do you make an agreement that says, "Listen, no matter what happens, we're not going to argue on this hike. We're just going to go out and enjoy it." And then when we come back, all the anger that we've saved up at the car park, we can shout at each other. No, we we get along really well. We hardly ever argue. I know that sounds almost impossible, but um, we work together as a team. We don't always walk together. We, we like to walk together and chat and then split up. You'll walk like 20 or 30 meters in front of me when we just walk with our own thoughts, mm. um, just clear your mind and think and recharge. But I don't think we've ever fought on a hike or after a hike. No, uh -uh. we get along really well. We both Good. enjoy hiking very much. <laughs> when when you were at school, given given who your dad is, um, and he's on here, Vili Ulafir, um, he's on the title of the of the cover with together with you. Um, at school, did did you already know if we go back to Nina in Matric, were you already hiking? Look, I grew up hiking. I was six months old when I did my first real hike in Drakensburg um, with my mom and my dad. Um, and most of my school holidays I spent on the farm. So we used to go hiking in the felt a lot. Um, holidays with my dad in Namibia, we used to go wild camping, which always involved hiking. So from a young age, I had been hiking, but then... You know, high school kids, um, yeah. priorities change. <laughs> um, Hiking doesn't become a, a, the top priority anymore. No, hanging out with your parents. Yeah, not mm, the... Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> but my love for, for nature remained. Um, and then obviously I finished school, got a job, got married, had kids. Raised my kids up to an age where they were capable to go long on hikes. And that's when I picked up on it again. Okay. Yeah. Looking through your book, um, and as I say, it says here, before setting off, when you set off, um, what to do, what to look for, uh, tips and tricks, basically, of, of enjoying the day out. Because that's what hiking is all about. It's People tend to forget that hiking is not like running comrades or any other like trail running. It's not a it's not an endurance sport. Um, and if if the hike says it should take you an hour and a half and it takes you two and a half, does it really make a difference? No, it doesn't. I'm always at the back. 
Um, no matter how big the group, I'm always at the back because I'm always stopping and looking at flowers, taking pictures, and just taking in the moment. Um, so yeah, it's not an endurance sport. It's not a race. It's not. It's probably a challenge for yourself to finish yeah. it, but it's not. It's not. Um, it's not competitive. Unless it's about to getting do. out there and enjoying nature and getting fresh air and getting some exercise yeah. while you're doing all of this. Yeah, it's it's not. Um, there, there's no such thing currently as as um, endurance hiking, where where they make you you know uh, go point to point in a certain time. And I hope that for oh. extreme hiking, you remember when they had that extreme ironing challenge where people took ironing boards up Kilimanjaro and Everest and all sorts of weird stuff so they could iron and get into the record books. If people buy your book and you obviously want them to, is there a way of looking at, you haven't ranked these one to 40. These are just 40 of the hikes that you've enjoyed or your dad's enjoyed. And it's there for, for the reader to make a decision. Because they know their fitness levels. You mentioned earlier the, the hike that you enjoy um, is a difficult hike. So as a novice hiker, you don't want to head off on a hike that, as you say, is going to hurt you so badly that you never want to do it again. So there, there's no yes. there's no shame in saying, Ach, let's just go and do 5Ks. So if it takes us two hours, what the heck? We'll just go and enjoy what we see. No, exactly. I think people... Um, or unexperienced hikers should definitely start with the easier ones, get used to their shoes, get used to their gear, um, test their fitness levels, and then obviously work it up from there. And I think it comes naturally. Like if you've done a couple of short hikes, you feel, okay, I can do three kilometers more, or I can do four kilometers more. Because um, obviously you want to better yourself. Yes. Um, People with small kids, I would suggest sticking to the shorter ones um, until you know what they are capable of. Yeah. Like I said, my my son was 12. He was 11 when he did the Arctic. Okay. Um, but he had been hiking with us for a long time. He had been doing cross-country at school, so I knew that he was fit enough. Okay. Um, but they really start with the shorter ones and work your way up. The um we we or I alluded to comrades. Is there a gold standard hike? Is the Otter Trail the sort of holy grail of hiking in South Africa? Because you've you've got the Otter, you've got the Oyster Catcher Trail, you've got Blader River. Um, is there a is there a top of the mountain type of hike that everybody who hikes seriously wants to tick off on a bucket list? I think that depends from person to person. Um, I know the Amatola hike in the Eastern Cape is rated the most difficult multi-day hike in South Africa. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't. I don't know. I think it depends from person to person. Obviously, every hike has got their bucket list that they work through. Um, but your yeah, Amatola, Otter, the Fish River Canyon. Um, the Itaniqua, those are the big ones in, in South Africa. So, and who rates the the hikes on a on a difficulty scale? Is there a, a South African hiking club that go out and set the standard, and they they then do the write ups, or like somebody like you who's just a keen hiker and decided to put a book together? Um. I think the ratings are very relative. I know the Mountain Club of South Africa, they've got a rating scale which they work on. But I don't think there's a specific company or entity that goes out and rates, uh, rates hikes. Okay. Um, it's all relative. Yeah. It's like photography. It's subjective. At the end of the day, one person likes the image you shot, the other person doesn't. And I should imagine yes. it's the same you may find a particular hike very easy and you go bounding up the thing like a mountain goat and somebody else comes along and they have to be stretched off because it's just been too difficult for them. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so with that in mind, what have been your best and worst experiences on a hike? Um, I think best would probably be the Tegela Falls because, because it was in the, the Drakensberg, which I'd never been to that I can remember. Um, and it was such an adventure because you don't know what's coming and you've got these chain ladders that you need to climb and then you get to the source of the Tugela River, which is just a little stream coming out of the, the soil. Mm. Um and it takes you to this majestic waterfall. Um, so that, although I love the Cape Town mountains most, um, I would say the Drakensberg to Gela Falls was my best. And then worst, um, I think I ran this scope in, in Robertson, in the Dasi's Hook Nature Reserve. It's, they call it the Kilimanjaro of the Western Cape. Um, and it's quite a tough, it's an overnight hike. And it's quite tough because it's up all day and then you sleep over at the height and you summit the next morning. I think the summit is about 1,690 meters. So it's quite high. Um, and then it's down all the way. And I've done it twice, but the second time there was a level five weather warning that they issued the day before we were due to start. But we kept watching the weather and we decided to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so the first day was fine, but coming down the next day, there was just rainstorms and thunder. You could actually smell the, the lightning mm -hmm. hitting the ground like a few hundred meters. So that was quite scary um, and difficult. So yeah, I would say that was the, the worst one for me. Now, with that in mind, Nina, you know, we spoke about you spoke about a first aid kit and we spoke about what they what people should pack. Would you then also suggest that they tell somebody where they've gone and when they expect to be back? You know, rather than just yes. getting up on a Sunday morning and saying, All right, I'm off, I'll be back on Sunday evening, and then come Tuesday morning, nobody knows where you are. Yes, yeah, no, definitely. Always tell someone, either a friend or a family, um, where you will be hiking and what your estimated time is that you'll be back. Just as, just on that note, I, I didn't uh, get to, to look. Have you said on the trails, and I'm looking while I talk to you, if there is cell signal on the trails or not? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, most of them do. All right. It's only the really remote ones that don't. And okay. it also it, it varies because in some sections you might get signal and then in other sections you don't. All right, because you you don't want to do one of those zombie apocalypse movies where you get to a point and you realize you've only got one percent battery left. I don't understand people no. who do that. You know, take a battery charge. <laughs> well, make sure the night before your phone is charged, and then don't spend the entire hike scrolling. Uh, through Facebook, does, you know, to to tell people yes. where, what you're doing. No, definitely. So, so what is next for Nina? Is there another book in the offing, or you know, does your day job get in the way of you sitting down to write? Um, no, my day job doesn't get in the way because I I write and hike on weekends. Okay. Um, there is a possibility of a of another book, but I'm not going to give away too much. Um, <laughs> Fair you enough. have to watch this space. <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch this space, people. Right over there. That space just there. <laughs> who is this on is, who is this on the cover, just by the way? That is a very good friend of ours. Um, his name's Ian. He did my most of the hikes that are in the book he did with us. Um, yeah, and that's just the, the image that the publishers chose for the for the cover. Okay, so you couldn't afford to pay him. That's why it's a back of headshot, so he can't be seen by his friends. He told him he <laughs> that day. <laughs> um, the, the, it's a beautiful book and really, really well presented. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to all at... Um, Penguin Random House and at um, Straight Travel and Heritage because it's, as I say, it's a beautiful book. It makes a great gift. I'm trying to get this on without getting 
the ring light to catch the cover. Um, it makes a great gift, either for somebody that you like, or for yourself for that matter. There's nothing stopping you buying yourself a gift. I'm assuming, with the exception of you, who hasn't yet received your copy, that the book is, is available online in bookstores. Um, are you going to go the electronic route as well? Will it be available on Kindle at some particular point or Amazon? Um, at the moment, it's available on Take a Lot and Loot online stores, and right. then also um, all all good bookstores, Wordsworth, um, exclusive books, graffiti books. I'm not sure about the digital version. Um, I'll I guess we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, that would be up up to the to the publishers. Mm. Um, and then there's also a great competition that. Strike Nature are running um, with Solomon. They've sponsored a pair of really nice Vortex ah, hiking boots. Right. Um, and then you can win that along with a copy of the book. Um, and you can enter online on the Penguin Random House website. And there will also be a, a ad in the Go Hiking magazine, the annual Go Hiking magazine that's going to be published in September, I think. Yeah. Wonderful. So so setting it up for Christmas and the new year. So now people yes. who, are in, who, who like hiking go, ah, we know what we want in our stocking. So the stocking will now mm -hmm. be book size, not just sweeties and stuff <laughs> like that. Nina, thank you so much for chatting to me. The book is called Hiking Beyond Cape Town, 40 Inspiring Hikes Outside the City. I've been chatting to Nina Duplessis, who is the co-author together with her dad, Billy Ulafir. Uh, the book is published by Penguin Random House and Strake, and it's available, as Nina said, in all good bookstores. It's also available in some bad bookstores, I should imagine. <laughs> I don't know why only the good ones have got them. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. And uh, next time I'm down your way, I'm going to take the book and maybe go out and do one of these hikes with my child as well. Yes, you should. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Great stuff. Now keep the cold weather to yourself down there in the Western Cape. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. Okay. My guest today, once again on Travel and Things, uh, has been Nina Duplessis. Nina, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you, 